morning dear students and welcome to today's session in this particular session we are going to start with our discussion of the poem john brown by bob dylan so before we go on to discuss this poem in detail first let us try to understand the plan or how we are going to proceed with this poem now since john brown falls into the genre of anti war poem therefore we'll first try to understand what is an anti war poem though we had done this while discussing the poem the gift of india then we will have a brief discussion about the poet that is bob dylan then uh, a brief introduction to the poem what the poem is basically about and this particular poem john brown also is a lyrical ballad so therefore in order to understand the poem better it is important for us to understand what is a lyrical ballad so we'll discuss that topic as well then we move on to the stanza wise explanation of the poem and the critical analysis of these stanzas then we go on to the theme of the poem and finally i'll be giving you a note on this particular poem so in the course of the explanation if you have any doubt any queries feel free to ask in the google meet class so as said earlier first let us discuss what is an anti war poem a war poet basically is a poet who participates in a war and writes about his experiences it may also be the case that a non combatant that is a person who does not participate in the war but writes poems about war or glorifies war is known as a war poet while this particular term war poet is used to specially apply to all those poets who served during world war 1 but the term can also be applied to a poet of any nation writing about any war so this war poetry includes homer's iliad which was written around 8th century bc and the old english poem the battle of maldon that celebrated the actual battle of 991 as well as the poetry of the american and the spanish civil war the crimean war etc now we need to understand that ever since the time of the ancient greeks literature has always glorified war heroes they have made the war seem like something honorable something glorious something worthwhile and they always considered war as a romantic endeavor for the most part war although tragic was viewed as necessary and in many ways romantic however this notion of the people was shattered at the beginning of the 20th century by the horrors of the first world war which is also termed as 
द ग्रेट वॉर दिस वॉर द फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर ब्रॉट अबाउट अ ग्रेट चेंज इन द माइंड्स ऑफ द वेस्टर्नर्स और वी कैन से द वेस्टर्न थिंकर्स हु हैड ग्रोन अकस्टम्ड टू द रोजी पिक्चर्स पेंटेड बाय द रोमांटिक and the victorian authors painters and poets the number of deaths caused by the great war the inhuman nature of trench warfare people used to soldiers used to, to remain in the trench for days weeks and months so that was very inhuman treatment to those soldiers the introduction of new deadly chemical weapons such as chlorine gas the mustard gas and the conditions under which the soldiers were made to live and fight appeared to be the antithesis of what civilized existence was supposed to be thus we see that a need was felt to write literary pieces to bring forth the true nature of war and the horrors of war the writers thus started writing poems condemning war and lamenting the loss of innocent soldiers they started painting word pictures to showcase the gruesome reality of war and the sufferings of the victims of war they could not find anything glorious romantic or heroic in fighting battles as the famous dramatist george bernard shaw puts it in his play arms and the man so george bernard so was a very pragmatic writer and he shatters the romantic notion associated with the war in his play arms and the men and i am quoting one of the lines from arms and the men he says soldiering my dear madam is the coward's art of attacking mercilessly when you are strong and keeping out of harm's way when you are weak that is the whole secret of successful fighting get your enemy at a disadvantage and never on any account fight him on equal terms now war is often considered to be glorious to be romantic to be heroic to be chivalric but here gb shaw shatters that notion he says soldiering to fight is not a brave act it is not a courageous act instead it is an act of cowardice why he considers it to be an act of cowardice is that we attack mercilessly when we realize that we are stronger than compared to our opponent but the moment we realize that our opponent is stronger than us then we think it to be wise to avoid any sort of duel or fight and this is the whole secret of successful fighting so any fighter will try to get his enemy at a disadvantage and then fight off fight with him and they never fight on any account on equal terms then how can we consider fighting soldiering or war to be a courageous act it is an act of cowardice now such attitude towards war is known as the anti war attitude and this particular poem john brown is an interesting anti war poem now let us try to know about bob dylan so here 
you can see the image of Bob Dylan, okay, a famous American vocalist as well as a songwriter. Now, Bob Dylan, his actual name was Robert Allen Zimmerman. He was born on May 24, 1941. He is an American songwriter, singer and poet. He began performing folk and country songs taking the name of Bob Dylan but his actual name was Robert Allen Zimmerman. In 1961 he signed his first recording contract and emerged as one of the influential voices in the history of American popular music. In 1963, he released The Free Wheeling, which marked his voice as one of the most original and poetic voices. This is the album that included two of the most memorable 1960s folk songs blowing in the wind and a hard rain is a gonna fall his next album the times they are a changing firmly established bob dylan as the definitive songwriter of the 60s protest movement much of his famous work dated from the 1960s chronicled social un unrest. They were about the social unrest in America. And Dylan has embarked himself on a never-ending tour as a performing artist. He released the studio album Modern Times in 2006. Together through life in April 2009, a bootleg album called The Whitmark Demos in 2010, a live album titled as Bob Dylan in Concert Brandy's University 1963 was released in 2011 and another studio album Tempest in September 2012. Now this legendary singer songwriter has received 11 Grammy Awards, a Golden Globe Award an Academy Award as well as the Presidential Medal of Freedom. In 2016, he received the Nobel Prize in Literature for having created a new poetic expressions within the great American song tradition. Now, let us discuss about the poem. Now, John Brown, this particular poem, is an anti-war song that Bob Dylan wrote in the year 1962. Basically the poem tells the story of a young man named as John Brown who proudly marched off to war expecting to find glory, honor and win medals. But he returned after many months, all shot up. He had a disfigured face and he was barely able to talk. He told his mother about his horrible experience on the battlefield and how he realized he felt that he was just like a puppet in a play. The song ends with the young man dropping his medals into his mother's hand. Now this particular poem is an interesting anti-war lyric which describes the horrors of war and the ease with which young men find themselves trapped in one. What does it mean? Ease with which young men find themselves trapped in one. The young men, they consider war to be heroic. They try to achieve name, glory, honor 
in the battlefield and it is because of this romantic notion of warfare the false notion of warfare that they are easily caught in the trap in the horrors of war the idea of being a hero in the battlefield is very tantalizing it is as tantalizing as it is fatal it is tantalizing means it is very tempting it arouses desire in us to achieve that uh, heroic glory but at the same time it is very dangerous as well this idea of heroism is often driven by a false sense of bravado okay. that is a confident way of behaving in order to impress others and machismo okay that is having an aggressive masculine pride which drives men to a situation where they find themselves in a war see try to understand this idea of heroism achieving heroism in the battlefield is often driven by a false sense of bravado and machismo and it is this false sense of bravado and machismo which drives men to a situation where they either try to kill somebody else or they die trying to kill somebody else okay either they try to kill somebody else or they themselves die in the battlefield and when they discover that all the power and the glory in the battlefield is nothing more than political puppetry it is too late so they are too late to find that all this power and glory is nothing more than just political puppetry where the strings are pulled by powerful interested players the diplomats now john brown this particular poem uses colloquial diction to interrogate the ideas of war honor and masculinity and show what happens when people go to fight a good old fashioned war now this is what the poem is basically about now let us try to understand a lyrical ballad john brown as a lyrical poet now as said earlier that this particular poem john brown is a recorded song in the form of a ballad now this particular poem narrates the story of the titular hero of the poem john brown in 12 stanzas the story is not set in a particular time or location no war is named so therefore it has an universal appeal it can imply to any war of any time period in history each stanza of these 12 stanzas comprises of four lines and there is no particular rhyming scheme followed in the poem though few lines rhyme with each other now you have done ballad before also a ballad is a form of poetry that is particularly meant for recitation ballads have a long history and are found in many cultures the ballad actually began as a folk song and continues today in popular music you know baul singers you know itinerant musicians of europe so all these ballads they began as a folk song and continues today also in popular music a typical ballad consists of stanzas that contain a quatrain now what is a quatrain quatrain is a stanza of four lines the meter or rhythm of each line is usually iambic which means it has one unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable in ballads there are usually eight or six syllables in a line all ballads and narrative in form 
that is they narrate a story they tell us a story since ballads are originally set to music they have refrain refrain repeated chorus or repeated chorus just like we have in a song there is repetition and alliteration in order to add to the musical quality of the poem and the rhyming scheme is often a b a b because of the musical quality so though in this poem the poet has not followed any particular rhyming scheme though few lines rhyme with each other but we'll see how far this poem john brown is a lyrical ballad now these are all the basic things that we require to understand the poem in the next class we'll start with the stanza wise explanation of the poem and i have also given you a song please listen to that song thank you and stay blessed